times, but I think my brother Marlon got it the most because he had a hard time at first, and he tried so hard. And um, it was always, do it like Michael, do it like Michael, you know, but the others were very nervous, and I was nervous too, you know, because um, he was tough. How often would he beat you? Mm, too much. Would he only use a belt? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> no, more than a belt. What else would he use to hit you with? Ironing cords. Whatever's around. Throw you up against the wall as hard as he could. Um, See, it's one thing to... But you were only a child. I know. You were a baby. I know. It's one thing to discipline. And you were producing successful records. I know. He would lose his temper. I just remember hearing my mother scream, Joe, you're going to kill him. You're going to kill him. Stop it. You're going to kill him. You know, and, uh, and I was so fast. You know, he couldn't catch me half the time. But when he would catch me, oh, my God, it was bad. It was really bad. I looked up at the screen and couldn't help wondering what effect this violence had on young Michael. We were terrified, you know, terrified. I can't tell you. I don't think he realizes to this day how scared, scared, I mean scared, so scared that we, I would regurgitate. You would vomit? Mm-hmm. When would you vomit? What, what, what would produce that sort of reaction in you? His presence, just seeing him. And uh, sometimes I'd faint. My bodyguards would have to hold me up. Uh, when he was beating you, did you hate him? Yeah. Strong hate. That's why, to this day, I don't lay a finger on my children. I don't want them to ever feel that way about me. Ever. And he didn't allow us to call him daddy. And I wanted to call him daddy so bad. He said, I'm not daddy, I'm Joseph to you, you know? And I totally forgive him for all of it, you know? You have to. But uh, I don't allow my children to call me Michael. I say, I'm daddy. <laughs> it's just the opposite. So when people say the abuse, abuse, that's not true. That's not true at all. Thirty years on, the memories seemed as raw as ever, but there was little time now for reflection. It was late summer and Michael Jackson was leaving Neverland. He called me on my mobile to say he was off to spend a few weeks in Las Vegas and I could join him. In Las Vegas, he would reveal his bizarre experiences of love and sex, his obsession with his face and most extraordinary of all, I'd get to meet his children. Michael Jackson set up temporary home in the gambling capital of the world, Las Vegas.
I went to see him at the Four Seasons Hotel, where he'd taken out no fewer than seven suites. I wanted to know why he would leave Neverland to spend months on his own in a hotel room. Especially as it would become quickly apparent that Jackson was deeply bored and isolated. In fact, he was delighted to have some company other than the bizarre collection of mannequins and gadgets that I found in his room. This is your suite. What do you like about Las Vegas? Oh, uh, I like the entertainment. The entertainment? Yeah. It's a fun place to visit. What's this? Oh, I, uh, I, when I'm bored, I, I ride in the hallways of the hotel on this. I cruise through the hallways late at night sometimes. You are joking. No, I'm serious. It's a, a game that I like. It's got a skateboard, is it? Yeah. Oh, that was a bit unfortunate. Yeah, it I got into hit a there. Car, but there we are. You make points. Here comes a car. Whoop! Whoa! When I'm in my room and I'm bored and late at night, in between writing music, I play with this thing. Whoa! Whoa! I just got hit there. I wouldn't like to see you drive a car. Uh. Is that the Incredible Hulk? No, the Green Giant. The Jolly Green Giant. It's an old commercial, American commercial, to make kids eat green peas. Ho, 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 Green Giant. I soon learned that Las Vegas was full of uneasy memories for Jackson. Uh, I had to share bedrooms with one of my brothers on the tours. And uh, there was some action going on in my room every night. I could hear it. And I used to, my job was to play sleep. And, and I was told by one of my brothers, no matter what, don't get up, don't open your eyes. I go, I, I promise I won't. And so I would hear these girls come in, and I would hear them say, is that little Michael? And my brother would say, yeah. And they would go, oh, he's so cute, like that. And I, and I, I heard everything. And then I would hear, what oh, did you hear? With the girls. You heard them having sex? Yeah. In the same bedroom as you? Uh, let me see. Um, sometime and sometime not. Yeah. So on some occasions, you're lying down pretending to be asleep, mm -hmm. and your brother's having sex with someone in the same room? Mm. Mm-hmm. Did you have many girlfriends through your adolescence? Uh, not a lot. I did. My first girlfriend, uh, who I really loved a lot, was uh, Tatum O'Neill. And was it a typically romantic adolescent love affair? Yeah, it was. But I don't think I was ready for some of the things she was talking about. <laughs> I was pretty naive.